Oh. All right, we are live on Facebook. Good evening. Good evening, Gentlemen. everyone. And, Good evening. Uh, very special guest this this evening and this morning where where she is in Armenia, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you. It's you know it's been a minute. We've uh, you know we're continuing with our project. Uh, you know, educating the diaspora. We have an incredible guest right now. Uh, we'll let people trickle in, as folks typically do on Facebook Live. Uh, let everybody come in. Um, the, you know, the person that we're, you know, talking to today, to me, needs no introduction, but obviously, you know, this is a diverse group of people that come to listen to us. I will do the, my best to uh, do the introduction justice because the, you know, the resume is definitely lengthy and, and incredible. Um, our guest today is none other than <clears throat> member of parliament with the Armenia faction, Hayastan Dashing, Aspram Karpeyan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, excellent. Good morning. Thank you so much right. for taking the time and joining us early morning for you there in Yerevan. Thank you so much, Asma. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thank you, thank you. So a quick uh, bio. So, you know, Asram was uh, born in 1990 in Yerevan. She graduated from the Faculty of Law at Yerevan State University in 2010. In 2012, she received her master's degree from the Faculty of Law. Uh, in 2016, graduated from the Geneva Academy of International Humanitarian Law and Human Rights, Masters of International Humanitarian Law and Human Rights. In 2019, uh, Ms. Karpevian graduated from the Oxford University with a Masters of Diplomatic Science. In between 2012 and 2015, uh, she, uh, she was an officer of an international contractual legal support division of the Defense Policy Department of the Ministry of Defense of the Republic of Armenia. And from 2015 to 2016, she's an expert on voluntary basis at the parliamentary parliament mission of the Republic of Armenia to the United Nations in Geneva. Um, Currently, you are part of the uh, the highest on Dushing faction, the and you're part of the opposition bloc in the parliament of uh, 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 the Republic of Armenia. Um, there's more to say. Uh, if you, uh, for those of you that have not uh, seen Miss Miss Kerpeyan, uh, you, and you know, a quick YouTube will definitely give you a plethora of uh, her speeches. She is an outspoken uh, critic of the current administration. Um, she is the voice of essentially the voice behind uh, keeping us informed and pushing back on the policies that are being put forth by the ruling party. There is so much that we need to go into and, uh, and talk to her today. But first and foremost, I want to uh, kind of highlight an important point that Ms. Karpeyan is none other than the daughter of Tatul Karpeyan. Uh, Tatul was an Armenian commander. He was the self-appointed leader of the paramilitary units in Getashen and Martunashen villages in the Shaoman region of Artsakh uh, during the first Nagorno-Karabakh war. He fought bravely but was uh, killed during the Operation Ring, still under the Soviet uh, uh, Azerbaijan Oman, which is, which is the special forces. It's something that at one point we should discuss at in uh, in our show, it's, a, it's an educational point that all Armenian diasporans need to know uh, about the story of Getashen and uh, Shaomyan region in particular. Um, and today here in the United States is his birthday. He is a national hero. He's someone that we are all indebted to. He is a hero defending Artsakh, defending Armenia and defending the nation of all Armenians globally. So I wanted to commemorate that, that today is his birthday here in the United States although I know it's already Friday and in Armenia. So memory- Celebrate to all weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so very much, Vicor, for your kind intro introduction. Um, thank you. This means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so let's, uh, you know, let's, let's begin. We have so many things that we want to discuss, so many things that we want to, uh, 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 you know, uh, questions that we want answered and, uh, folks that need to be informed about the, the current situation in Armenia and everything that has been uh, going on. David, I'll cue to you. Sure, sure. I think it's a great segue uh, with the, the history of, of your father, uh, Greg, as you're going into um, the history of, of your father, Aspram. Um, and God bless his soul. It'll be the anniversary of his passing on April 30, uh, in just a few days here. Uh, we can Maybe we could talk more about that in a little bit. But tell us about yourself, 
uh, Osprom, just your journey from the daughter of a national Armenian hero to now the member, a member of parliament uh, in Armenia's National Assembly. Just tell tell our viewers about about your journey uh, and about yourself. Ah, uh, um, I guess it's been a, a hectic journey this past uh, couple of years, uh, and especially after the war. Um, a lot has changed um, in my life personally. Um, the way I saw the world and they, the way I perceived it um, has changed completely. Um, I think the war affected uh, a great deal um, all of us living here in Armenia and Artsakh and also in diaspora. The way we now see our uh, the matters that are directly related to our identity and um, the way we want the world to see us. So um, I think um, the person that I was before the war and the person that I am now um, is a completely different one. Uh, so <laughs> I guess you're more interested at this moment uh, in in the person that I am now, um, um, uh, absolutely. Whatever just fighting, want. fighting, fighting for for the matters that um, um, are very dear to my heart. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I mean, I don't want to interrupt any of the, the line of question, but I would to back up what you're saying. I think we're all called to serve somehow, and and events like what happened in the war really change us. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah. I know. I know. I felt it. I know, you know, we organized marches and and have been broadcasting regularly uh, and doing everything that we can to, you know, to save our people and to, and to broadcast about it. So, I mean, it, so I, I think I would ask, you know, um, how did that transformation happen? And tell us a little bit more about that, that process for you. Um, in the beginning, it was all dark and black after the November 9th. Um, I think that's when I realized that I personally should work on um, on myself first and uh, to take care of myself and the feelings that I'm I was having uh, and then to transform those the anger the sorrow the uh, on um, the feelings that I was feeling the dark feelings that I was feeling into something um, hopeful and bright. Um, and that, that turned into a fight, a fight for, uh, mm -hmm. for our identity, a fight for, for who I, um, I think, um, to where I think the Armenian people should go and the Armenian statehood um, should, um, should be. So um, I think that was a, that was a quite an experience for me to um, work on myself, to analyze the feelings that I was feeling, to separate the anger um, and to um, put it in a more brighter perspective. So that's, that's how I now, when I look back, that's how I see the journey that I had. <laughs> Excellent. I appreciate those words because through 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 a lot has transpired in the past two years. A lot of Armenians have uh, readjusted, realigned, re-understood what their purpose and where to go and how to uh, how to proceed next. And we will definitely cue to your leadership to give us the the the, the know-how on the ground to kind of direct the diaspora and you know the Armenian nation on which direction to go. But I want to kind of take a segue uh, to today. Uh, the reason why uh, how I was you know, propelled, you know, I've been following you for a while. There's a lot of uh, common contacts, uh, but what propelled us in Honest Media to, to reach out to you to talk, it was that one incident recently when you and uh, your fellow uh, members of parliament traveled to Artsakh to stand in solidarity, I believe, and I'll let you go into it in detail with, uh, with uh, you know, with the, with Artsakhsis in Stepanakert after the speech that you heard from uh, the prime minister, Nikol Pashinyan, um, in, in, in show of solidarity, and you were essentially precluded from entering Artsakh. 
Can you describe what happened? Can you explain to us how that transpired? And, uh, you know, uh, so that the, the audience can understand what exactly happened last week, I believe. Sure. Um, actually, it was before his um, speech. Uh, we, um, because we held an, um, a rally on the 5th of April, mm -hmm. um, where we declared and to Put it to put the matter in a nutshell we we declared our red lines and the red lines of the armenian people people in general um during that uh rally uh and it was natural that we're gonna the opposition bloc in the parliament is going to boycott the next sitting in the parliament so that's what happened uh but we had a different agenda an armenian centered agenda an agenda which holds Artsakh as a priority. So we were um, uh, planning to, uh, and that's what we um, announced in the parliament, that we're planning to travel to Artsakh and the bordering regions in Armenia. Uh, and to, during that session, um, and to um, conduct our, um, um, Armenian-centered agenda mm -hmm. uh, in those pl places. So um, we declared, we raised um, the flag of Artsakh in the parliament, uh, which triggered uh, a very disgraceful and um, disgusting behavior, to say the least, uh, by the ruling party members. Um, and then we left the building, we left right after the announcement, and we uh, headed to um, to Artsakh, part of uh, the group, because we were divided in three, uh, in in uh, four groups, and we had it. Uh, one group had, uh, was supposed to head to Artsakh, uh, the others to other bordering villages and regions in Armenia. So um, that's what happened, um, and I was in the group which was supposed to uh, visit Stepanakert, where we were. Uh, going to have a joint uh, sitting in the um, par uh, in the National Assembly of Artsakh uh, with the main uh, five fractions um, um, in Artsakh, and um, it was all about the agenda. As I said, was all about Armenia and Artsakh, and most specifically the security agenda. Um, that we were um, so um, we were talking about uh, all these months. Uh, so um, Artsakh um, centered agenda, but um, yeah, uh, as you as you said, uh, we were deprived of the opportunity to enter Stepan Agir. Right. So what happened, mm -hmm. um, if if I may? Uh, so oh, we yeah. we reached the set. We 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 reached the first checkpoint. Um, which, uh, which is under the uh, control of the Armenian um, officers. Um, uh, so um, it was unprecedented what we saw there because um, the level of security and the level of um, the presence of um, officers of the national security services was unprecedented okay. on that checkpoint. Uh, my colleagues uh, who previously visited Artsakh and have, I mean, they were, uh, they have been traveling back and forth all these months. Uh, so um, they, they were shocked um, by the level of uh, security on that checkpoint. So um, although we passed that checkpoint, but the uh, scrutiny and the um, the way they checked our documents and then proceeded in letting us uh, move on to the next checkpoint was really um, abnormal. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we uh, we reached the second checkpoint, which was uh, the um, which is the Avno checkpoint. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's uh, under the control of the Russian peacekeepers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where uh, we've been told that um, we, the uh, members of the um, National Assembly, the MPs, uh, we cannot um, uh, enter uh, 
uh, enter the checkpoint and we cannot move on uh, to the next uh, checkpoint. And yeah, uh, basically we cannot go to Stepanakert. So um, what was interesting uh, was that um, they were they had a list um, with our names on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it was only us, the MPs, um, um, that uh, couldn't enter mm -hmm. <laughs> Artsakh. Uh, the rest of the team, the experts, the opinion makers, the uh, drivers, um, they were all uh, mm -hmm. clear to enter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in other words, yeah. is it okay to assume that it, this was obviously, so from the checkpoint on the Armenian side, a heightened presence of Armenian security, uh, you know, border guards, um, and the, 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 the names, the list, this was a premeditated, essentially a directive, do not let these particular individuals, members of parliament, members of Armenian parliament, to an Armenian uh, uh, land in Artsakh, that was the kind of the point. Um, can Precisely. we assume, mm -hmm. okay can we yeah because that, mm -hmm. yeah oh, sorry yeah sorry yeah because that's what we've been told that um by the uh, i mean the russian uh, peacekeepers uh the officers um they told us that they have an order oh. not to let us in but that's uh but who gave the order how they got the uh, the list with our names and um yeah um i unfortunately we uh, i personally don't have um detailed answer for that because um the only thing that we've been told was that um they have an order and that's it mm. and <laughs> so, now greg yeah. it's important to mention opposition yeah. opposition members of parliament right, right. Uh, yes right. yeah opposition members of parliament but armenian uh, citizens nonetheless and right, people of course. that have been able to enter Artsakh a year and a half, two years ago, freely without any issues. Right. That flag was purchased in Stepanakert. Can this happen again? And why is it being done by, by you know, I'm assuming by Yerevan? So these are the things that are really concerning to all of us in the diaspora, and particularly to the citizens of Artsakh, because they are being surrounded. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, and one important thing is that... Um, Another important thing is that um, we, um, uh, even days before our um, attempt to enter Artsakh, um, my colleagues visited Artsakh freely. So um, um, my assumption is that uh, because uh, of the um, actions that we, uh, because of the rally on the 5th of April and then uh, the actions that um, uh, we took uh, after that rally in the parliament. Um, as I said, we um, um, we um, boycotted. We announced that we're boycotting the sittings. We uh, raised the flag of Artsakh, um, and right after those actions, um, if you go back and. Um, watch the speeches that the ruling party members gave uh, after our announcement. Mm -hmm. You'd yes. see the pattern. You'd see the clear pattern of um, uh, desperate attempt to um, minimize um, the role uh, and the um, importance of um, those actions and in, in general, the importance of um, the symbolic action that we um, we had uh, in the in the parliament. Okay. So I, I, we've had we've had a couple questions on the feed, and so I just want to bring bring this up really quick quickly before we pivot. And that is, um, do you think that the reason for you being prevented was it? You think it was more politically motivated? Uh, because of the opposition, or do you think it was safety related? Did they not give you any real, I mean, I'm just exploring options and we've had questions about it. So I just want to address that. So um, do you, sure. do you, what, what could have been the reasoning? And I don't want you to, you know, obviously say you're a sitting member of, of par, 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 I, mean, I, I wouldn't expect you to say anything that you shouldn't say, um, but what, what are your thoughts? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, as I said, um, 
they were, I mean, the, the members of the ruling party were um, the wordings that they were using right after uh, our announcement was that um, we're gonna provoke, um, we're gonna uh, undermine, uh, we're gonna cause provocations, we're gonna undermine the security um, uh, of the uh, Armenian people in Artsakh. Uh, our visit uh, is not um, something um, of importance mm -hmm. um, and we shouldn't uh, because they're not visiting Artsakh and they haven't visited Artsakh after the November 9th right. uh, so basically we shouldn't do it either so um, this was a desperate attempt to uh, again um, to uh, justify their uh, inaction uh, mm -hmm. and uh, their um, uh, um, rejection because the invitation and the, uh, as I said, we were going to have a joint session in the parliament of Artsakh, in the National mm -hmm. Assembly of Artsakh. So uh, they got an invitation to uh, take part in that session too, mm -hmm. but they rejected. So uh, my assumption is that uh, this was a, um, this was done to uh, justify their um, rejection and their, um, yeah, right. and so, to justify not being there. Okay, so to um, to just quickly summarize from what I understand, right? Um, so um, Artsakh essentially sent an invite to a, to a session um, at a time when Artsakh, we in the diaspora are reading, is seeing itself more and more isolated with constantly Yerevan, sorry, the ruling party, right? Not everybody in Yerevan, clearly. Um, uh, making uh, 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 statements that allude to the fact that um, there is a possibility of Artsakh being kind of put in the framework of, you know, let's, you know, we know exactly what that means with, with Azerbaijan, right? And as you and your colleagues made the gesture to say, yes, we got an invite we want to show. And also something you just mentioned, I just did not know. Nobody from the ruling party since the capitulation yeah. of November of 2020 yes. visited. has, has, yeah. has yeah. visited okay. Artsakh. That is a statement in and of itself. So you decide to take uh, an, an amazing invite, uh, uh, something that, you know, Stepan Rakir needed to do and wants to see uh, a, a solidarity between, you know, uh, Stepan Rakir and Yerevan. You take the invite, you go there, and you are precluded by which I understand by Yerevan's side. Uh, uh, essentially, you know, the, the ruling party saying, please do not let these people go because other parts of your party, such as, you know, professionals, drivers, and others were allowed to, to, to proceed. This is what transpired, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes, um, precisely. Yeah, Ms. Okay. Ms. Kupan, thank you for providing that uh, additional context about to what happened and, and what it appears to be why it's happened. Could you tell us now about the, the speech that occurred on April 13 in the parliament by Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan and the current fallout from this dangerous speech uh, that he gave. What did he say? How many different speeches has he made where he's alluding to concessions or not even really alluding, he's essentially saying, summarizing that he's reaffirming his government's readiness to formally recognize Azerbaijan's territorial integrity and said Armenia is facing international pressure to scale back its demands on Nagorno-Karabakh. That's coming from articles we've seen. What can you tell us about what the current fallout is from that and, and what was said by the prime minister? Uh, what, what, what he said uh, was the, um, I guess it was the, um we've been as i said we've we've declared the red lines because on the 5th of april uh the red lines for armenian people and for the armenian statehood uh why we did that we did that because we knew uh, that this person this um um i call him a collaborator um uh, I call the uh, members of the ruling party uh, collaborators because they're um, 
what they're doing, they're serving the um, Turkish Azerbaijani agenda. So what they did, uh, they um, openly uh, announced um, their real agenda on that day. Um, he, what he said uh, was not a surprise for me personally, and it wasn't. Uh, it was not a surprise for my colleagues either. That was we. Uh, that uh, that's precisely what we were uh, been telling uh, and trying to communicate with our people in Armenia, in Artsakh, and in uh, diaspora all these months. That these people came to surrender Artsakh. These people came to um, get rid of Artsakh because what they they perceive Artsakh as a burden. They uh, do not. Um, see Artsakh as part of their hydenic, they do not see Artsakh as part of their, their identity. Um, uh, uh, Artsakh, uh, the right to uh, self-determination of the uh, Armenians in Artsakh uh, is a bargaining chip for them. The Armenian cause is a bargaining chip for them. So uh, what he did uh, on that day uh, during his speech, he just uh, openly um, confessed to uh, the crimes that he committed uh, during all these years uh, that they, uh, he and his um, party um, uh, are in power. Okay, um, so this, this is a, a direct segue to another portion of what's going on right now. So several of the opposition members, as we can tell, uh, from what I understand, actually it's pretty much the entire opposition, all the, the, the 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 block that is uh, uh, in a in opposal to uh, the ruling party have declared essentially a boycott of, of the parliament, uh, stating that they can no longer be in the same. Some stating that they can no longer be in the same room with the My Step Alliance, uh, going as far as essentially saying that they're removing themselves from parliament and starting the act of uh, boycotting the parliament. It, can you describe what what that entails? What uh, what is currently happening, and what would we like to achieve through that? Um, I say we because the diaspora will need to at some point start actively voicing their opinion into what's going on. Um, please describe the the situation, the the boycott essentially of the parliament, and uh, what you know what we seem to achieve, want to achieve uh, through these acts. So the boycott that uh, we started last week, um, as I have already mentioned, um, is still it still continues. So um, and especially after those um, disgusting speeches that he gave mm -hmm. um, last week. So um, um, yeah, uh, the um, opposition block, the entire opposition block, um, is now um, in the streets. Uh, fighting and protesting and conducting different resistance uh, actions. Uh, we, um, and it's clear that the, um, we're witnessing um, a decentralized resistance at this stage. Um, both the um, uh, parliamentary uh, opposition bloc and the, um, the opposition forces outside the parliament um, are united um, um, in um, are united uh, in their uh, aim to get rid of this um, collaborators and uh, in saving our hydenic and protecting Artsakh. And uh, we decided it's a silent uh, consensus that we decided to conduct our, uh, every and each. Uh, each and every group decided to conduct um, its own uh, resistance um, agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, you, if you, if, if you, if you visit the Freedom Square now um, at this hour, you'd see different groups, um, uh, different groups of people uh, with the um, with with one um, agenda. Um, they're trying to do everything possible um, in every way possible to uh, spread awareness, to uh, awaken uh, the Armenian nation, mm -hmm. to, um, um, to um, 
yeah, to um, to once again uh, talk about Artsakh and to um, uh, bring people together and to unite Armenian people around the agenda uh, that holds again Artsakh as priority. Absolutely, and uh, I thank you for taking the stance because uh, uh, this the uh, there are multiple red lines that have been crossed, but there's this one seems to be one too far. So from what I understand, there's a you know. Uh, there are factions and groups of people that are reawakening right now in Yerevan and are staging uh, uh, acts of protest in uh, the Freedom Square, which is uh, around the Opera House, from what I understand, right? Yes. Um, uh, including, uh, there, there's, uh, uh, Mr. Vanetsyan is also doing uh, an act. And so this in is not a coordinated, but in a, in a way, like everyone that is seemingly in opposition is starting to come out and voice their, their protest essentially of the handing over of Artsakh and, uh, you know, essentially, you know, the, the threat, uh, the continued threat on Armenia itself. Yes, um, so we have, we have yesterday, uh, a group of uh, relatives, uh, parents um, of uh, fallen soldiers uh, joined the protests. Uh, we have uh, two incredible Armenian, um, boys, um, men um, um, who took part in both uh, four day war and uh, 44 day uh, war, uh, who are on a hunger strike at this moment. Um, again, they're um, in the uh, Freedom Square. Um, so uh, if, I, I guess um, what we're witnessing now is the, um, desperate uh, but also very um, um, incredible mm -hmm. um, uh, scenery of um, resistance um, and it's gonna um, I, I, um, I, I think in the uh, coming days you're gonna see more and more and more people joining the um, resistance and more people um, expressing their disagreements uh, with the policies and the um, agendas that this ruling party is trying to put forward. Absolutely, absolutely. And oh. sorry, Rich, if I just I can just finish on this note because if there were any uh, confusion before, if there was any bit of you know gray area, today we can understandably say that the ruling party wants to let go of Artsakh. I don't want to call it the framework of Azerbaijan's territorial integrity. Those are, you know, uh, university words. Those are heavy words. But in reality, what it is, is they want to secede and have Armenia and the Armenian nation without Artsakh. Am I correct to understand that? Yes, you are. Okay. I'm definitely correct. Right. And it so, oh, go ahead, go ahead. You were going to say no, 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 no. Well, it's, it's I, so here, here's what I was going to say. Um, many Armenian patriots throughout the decades, um, you know, pre-war and of course post, have spoken about the importance of Artsakh. So it's not like it's a brand new issue. It's not like it's uh, like you know the 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 issue of Artsakh only came up around the war. Um, and 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 the importance of it is is not to be understated. Uh, I would think. And so, you know, if many people have actually stated that that Artsakh is that if lose, if we lost Artsakh, it would be the the beginning of the last stage of the Armenian nation. And and so maybe first of all, I would ask if you agree with that, and, and if so, why? And maybe uh, educate some of our viewers. I mean, the, the three of us have done the best that we can in many ways to begin to educate. Uh, the diaspora and and the people that we know about why that is, but maybe we can hear it from someone such, such as yourself. Look, um, as long as I can remember, um, we've been told that um, Armenia is the security guarantor um, of Artsakh, mm -hmm. and um, that's what we we actually believed in. But uh, it's the contrary. Uh, Artsakh has always been the security guarantor of 
Armenia and the Armenian people and the Armenian statehood in general. This is not only about, and it, it's really important for people to understand, it's not only about Artsakh. Artsakh is only the first uh, stop for our enemies. Uh, they're, they're, they have uh, different plans for this region, plans which do not um, include or recognize uh, an Armenian sta statehood, the presence of an Armenian statehood in this region. So uh, uh, if you look at, the question, at this question from that perspective, it's um, absolutely clear that um, if uh, we, we, we gotta do everything possible to secure the um, presence of the Armenian statehood and the security of Artsakh um, in this region. Um, and that's what um, all this fight is about, right, us right. trying to do our best to secure our future in this region. Um, yeah, that's that's precisely what's what's going on here. Sure. Now. I mean, so it's, it's not to... about yeah yeah it's not about Artsakh only because right. what what they're gonna do is they're gonna uh, try to uh, move on and uh, because they're they're claiming Sunik as well they're claiming Yerevan as well so it's 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 just a matter of time if they come after Sunik and Yerevan and the rest of the Armenian statehood. Right, for sure. So, I mean, I, and I think you're right. I think there, there, there's a case to be made that uh, capitulating and continuing to negotiate with people who have clearly stated that they don't recognize us, they don't want us there, they don't want us to exist at all. Um, I mean, going so far back as to, as as uh, er Erdogan uh, saying that they were gonna they were finish what had, had been started. That's a pretty clear indicator to me and and to many other people what their intentions are. So it, it's really difficult for me to, to, to see these continual uh, concessions as anything other than the beginning of the dismantling of the nation. And so when we have uh, reports from, you know, uh, of veterans who are out there protesting, um, that says a lot. Maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, about what you've observed about those, the, 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 the veterans who are out there pro protesting and what, what can we do and like, like, um, what does the leaders of the of the opposition want the diaspora, and, and what can we do about that? Uh, the, I guess I've been talking about this um, uh, constantly. Uh, the the thing that I've witnessed, uh, the most incredible thing that I've witnessed during the forty four day war, was the unity the consolidation um, that that we had as an Armenian nation uh, around Artsakh, around our identity, or around our statehood. Right. Um, and it was mesmerizing and it was so incredible to see how uh, people put uh, away their differences, uh, political, um, personal, um, um, so I, I think uh, that's what we need to go back to, to try to unite our nation because uh, what our enemies did, they divided us and they succeeded. They won the battle because they, divide, they, they succeeded in dividing us and um, making us, making the Armenian, um, making us um, enemies. Um, and um, this is this is what I would really like to see unity to uh, find the strength to find um, the wisdom to unite our forces in Armenia, in Artsakh, and in diaspora. Because uh, the only thing that we have now is um, us the only, I mean, we can only rely on us, mm -hmm. on the strengths that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and the, that's, that's the unity. We've always won uh, when we were united. Uh, and I do believe that we're gonna win this 
uh, fights um, if we find the strength to unite again, to, um, to unite around one simple agenda that we do want to see Armenian statehood. We do want to have an Armenian statehood as an Armenian, uh, as, as, uh, as a nation, we do want to have a statehood. That's the only um, question that should, um, should be on the agenda uh, of unity. So uh, that's, that's what I'm really hoping for, uh, for us to um, finally realize that mm, no one's going to solve our problems. No one's going to do the work for us. Uh, it's on us, uh, and it's our responsibility to re secure the existence and the future of the Armenian statehood. Right. Well, I mean, we 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 have a statehood. We we have a statehood. It's a question of of protecting it and preserving it. So the so my question would be um, for those of us who are in the diaspora, who are thousands of miles away, what is the best way for us to contribute? I mean. You know, the three of us have been working hard behind the scenes and, and promoting as much as we can and directing people to take political action and 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 relentlessly reporting as much as we can. Um, but what are ways that, you know, not only us, but the, that we, what are things that we can do to bring to the people to say, this is what you need to do. Go do that. At this stage, uh, I guess, um, organizing rallies, marches um, that uh, put a light on the situation in Artsakh, the humanitarian crisis, the existential crisis, the uh, political crisis in Armenia and in Artsakh uh, would be a great um, a way to um, okay. support and to a great, a great way to um, awesome. yeah, so, express, express your, yeah. So I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I function in 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 slogans, and I function in 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 in, in uh, kind of uh, directives. So we need to elevate Artsakh in our day day to day rhetoric, because that is the entity that is the heart of the Armenian nation. Um, you mentioned something that was, uh, on the one hand, fairly simple, right? We need to elevate the need of our own statehood, as if it's being forgotten. And I have to agree with what you said because yes. Everything that the diaspora and those people that are curious that need to kind of understand and have that conversation at home or, you know, research or maybe reach out to people that know everything that the My Step Alliance is doing right now is handing over the reins to our state to foreign entities. I think that's why uh, Ms. Karpian said that we need to elevate the need for our statehood uh, uh, and our independence and only we can do that, meaning all of us. Armenians. That's that's from that's what I understand. Am I am I am I correct in that notion? Okay. You are. You are. <laughs> thank you, um, David. To you, my friend. Sure. Uh, thank you so much for breaking this down for for us and our viewers, uh, Ms. Krapan. And uh, my step alliance, of course, is the ruling party in power, Pashinyan's party that's in power uh, currently. You know, I have a question, and I'm curious your thoughts on this, uh, Osprom. Pashinyan was just reelected uh, less than a year ago. Could was any of this foreseen? Does the and I'm going off script a little bit here, but the was any of this foreseen? Does the general population that voted for him understand that this may have been possible that they were voting for him and that he by and by doing that they've now empowered him to carry this out? What are your thoughts on how he got reelected and how we even got here? Like, it's just- Look, uh, we've, been, we've been telling the Armenian um, people here in Armenia that, um, and uh, trying to uh, make them see uh, the manipulative, um, the, the manipulations that this political party uh, was conducting all this month uh, by, uh, by, by forcing them uh, into believing that they gave a mandate uh, to them. Uh, the, and by they, I mean 
the Armenian people gave a mandate to them to surrender Artsakh. So they gave a mandate, the Armenian people gave a man mandate to this um, ruling party to uh, uh, make the Armenian cause a bargaining chip. Uh, so uh, if you go back and um, watch the um, entire campaign, the videos of the campaign that they were having before the elections, you'd see the uh, clear uh, messages that they were sending. And it wasn't about the surrender of Artsakh. It wasn't about the, um, um, the uh, Turkey-Armenia uh, relations um, with preconditions. Uh, it wasn't about, um, um, as I said, it wasn't about the um, uh, giving away of the, um, um, the independence, the security uh, uh, agendas that we as Armenian uh, nation and as Armenian statehood have. So uh, the, when we say that they do not hold a mandate for that, that's what we mean. Uh, because uh, they came with the slogans that Artsakh is Armenia, full stop. But what mm -hmm. they did, they surrendered Artsakh. Now they're talking about the uh, rec uh, recognition of the territorial integrity of uh, Azerbaijan. Now they're talking of uh, about um, a status um, which um, does not involve um, uh, independence of Artsakh. Mm -hmm. um, so a status within Azerbaijan. Um, so uh, this, is, this is really clear that people, the voters that voted for this force, uh, were manipulated into believing that they're coming for um, uh, an Armenian-centered agenda, but what? But we we um, we see it clearly, and people do see it clearly now that um, they have been ma manipulated into believing in it. So um, the lies that this um, um, group of collaborators have been telling the Armenian people all these years um, are um, people people do see those. Uh, very clearly now. And uh, uh, thank you. And I appreciate you using the word collaborators because words are important. Context is important. Again, uh, you know, we came, uh, came from the year 2018 um, uh, and then slowly rolled into the terrible year of 2020. Um, and uh, folks usually, usually oftentimes referred to like incompetent government or, you know, they're incapable as a way to kind of, you know, diminish the, 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 the evil. And in reality, I don't think they're incompetent in any way. They're actually uh, enabling and they're actually in alliance with, with those that want to see the worst for us. Um, that is not my opinion. That is actually the breadcrumbs are there and the evidence is there. And, uh, you know, I thank you for, you know, uh, you know, being on the front line to give us hope uh, that we can, uh, you know, we can turn a page here and, uh, the, you know, and we'll do our part in educating the diaspora and trying to make sure that people understand that uh, there is no uh, peace solution in the way that the My Step Alliance is trying to present it to us. Right. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, currently, um, yeah, David. Guys, I'm going to go off. Well, it's definitely related, but I'm thinking about us here in the West and my mind as we're talking is starting to spiral. And I'm curious, Osprom, your thoughts on this and perhaps your colleagues in Parliament, how you, you're thinking on this, because for the West, Turkey is in NATO. Mm -hmm. And we have seen our own president that recognized Armenian genocide, President Biden, Joseph Biden, what, six days later, enable section 90 whatever it is nine of the beginning of 907 right of the freedom of support act to be waived to allow another 100 million or whoever whatever he's going to give azerbaijan everything lines up with the west wanting the west maybe would probably want armenia to be totally 
aligned with Turkey and Azerbaijan. What is the awareness of this of your colleagues and even on the op, even on on the My Step Alliance side of things or or your opposition rather? What what can you tell us about that? Like just within the parliament, your knowledge of this, uh, what what can be done if anything? Like, <laughs> yeah. Look, um, the um, <clears throat> as I said, um, there are forces which have a clear interest in this region. Uh, the um, those forces um, have different interests which are not aligned with the Armenian interests in the region, right. and it's very clear uh, at this stage um, what the Armenian statehood, uh, what the Armenian people should do is that to fight for its own interests, to be the guarantor of the of its own interests, the security guarantor of its own interests. So uh, what what I, I I think the Armenian people uh, do and the um, um, do realizes um, the threats that Turkey and Azerbaijan um, how, I mean, the threat that's coming from Turkey and Azerbaijan and the um, forces that are um, contributing to the agendas that these two countries have in the region. Uh, it's clear, people do see it. Um, but uh, on the other hand, there is this um, very um, naive um, wish to have a better life to have a better um uh it's it's to have a better uh, um future so what happened in 2018 was for that future it mm -hmm. wasn't for the future that we we see now it wasn't for mm -hmm. the situation that we have now it was for better future for a different perspective for for um for a better life that uh, we as nation, uh, we thought that we deserve, uh, which is true. We do deserve to have a very, very uh, prosper life in, and we do deserve to live in our historic homelands. But, uh, but at the same time, we do have um, existential uh, threats mm -hmm. uh, in this region. Uh, so we do need to deal with those threats and to address those threats. And uh, the only way we can do it to have, um, uh, to form proper alliances to, uh, which will eventually serve our, uh, the Armenian agenda. Right. So um, uh, in, uh, and uh, I guess, um, um, the way I see at this stage, the situation, a geopolitical situation uh, is um, um, everything changes very rapidly in the region and in the world in general. Uh, every um, uh, small or big event influences um, the stage. So the geopolitical stage. So. Uh, we we do not have um, time to. I mean, we cannot waste time, and we cannot allow um, the um, enemy forces to dictate um, the rules. Uh, if we want to have, as I said, if we want to continue to having uh, continue to have uh, a statehood in this region, so. Uh, whatever it's needed, uh, with whomever it's needed, we should uh, do whatever it takes to secure uh, the existence of the Armenian statehood and to um, um, yes, to 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 uh, um, to uh, to uh, form a security. Um, um, uh, stage. I, I, yeah. 
yeah, yes, and to form to form this uh, this uh, environment, security environment uh, yeah. that will uh, eventually um, enable us to um, to go back uh, where we were yeah, <laughs> in yeah. terms yeah, well, of we all security. Of in terms of in terms of the security, um, yes. yeah. So yes, sir. well said. So, well said. The, I just think it's important for us, and we we try to do this. And let let our viewers know, and those of us here in the diaspora, especially in the U.S., that the West does not is not does not, not aligned with the Armenian statehood. They don't they don't they don't care about that. They care about NATO, and so it gives we have even more of an uphill battle here fighting for the Armenian cause because of the U.S.'s alignment with with NATO. Well, I would say we have a different uphill battle, not a yes. bigger one, but a different well, one. Well, no, not bigger than there. I just mean... It's sure. different I know exactly. what you mean. I know yeah. what you mean. I just wanted to clarify that. I would say that we all have a lot of work to do. And I would say that um, whatever that we, at least I, I, in this, I know I can speak for my co-host to say that you have three fierce and staunch ad advocates for uh, the cause of preserving the Armenian nation. So um, we will do what we can on this side to work with this government to uh, realign its thinking. And we trust that you're gonna do what you can in that government to realign its thinking. I don't know if we are going to be, I, you know, I know in this country, in, in our states, we have the ability to recall a governor. We have a, a, the ability to, um, you know, to try and get a president out of office. I'm not exactly certain if we have to have uh, the current administration for the next six years, but uh, I'd be curious to see how that plays out. Um, I, and the other thing I would say is this, um, we, many of us had a lot of optimism around this uh, administration when it first came, came to power. And, and, and the idea of uh, the Velvet Revolution was, was amazing to many of us. Um, and and it, it took a while for us to really realize that where there's smoke, there's probably fire. And so what we're seeing is, um, you know, a dissolution that, that is uh, disheartening. And, and, and I, you know, I think the only thing, the, the, the safest thing for me to say is that we're going to do everything that we can on, on, on our, on our end. So any way that we can help support you, we will. And that's it. really important. And that's really important. Uh, I think, uh, what we expect from uh, our compatriots in diaspora is to con uh, continue um, to advocate for the Armenian cause, the Armenian, uh, the matters that uh, are very important and uh, fundamental for the Armenian state. So uh, it's that's that's the expectation that we do have here in Armenian Artsakh um, for you to continue to highlight the importance uh, of um, Artsakh to uh, to uh, keep it on the agenda of your uh, respectful governments and to um, yeah to to raise awareness and to um, unite the diaspora forces uh, around the Armenian statehood and the um, security issues that we face now. Um, Asram, thank you so much for uh, you know we've, we've you know we've occupied an hour of your time an hour of your press time and we've had an amazing conversation so much more that we would like to cover you know the legacy of your father that that can be a, a conversation that we can you know you know showcase an entire uh episode to and i think we in the dad to really really uh go back into the archives and see what those people did for where we you know and and the gratitude that we need to show them today in the work that we do now by essentially, uh, uh, you know, strengthening and re-strengthening the Armenian nation. So uh, I myself, uh, you know, on behalf of Arach Media and all of us here in the diaspora, the, the many of us, and to be honest with you, I think there's a reawakening that's happening right now. Maybe it's a little latent, uh, but nonetheless, I, I see that people understand that this current administration is a bad actor, and we will do whatever we can to make sure that that is uh, uh, understood and as and we can uh, start leveraging the the reversal of that and uh you know mostly through through the elevation of the the conversation about Artsakh because in that particular conversation so much more is said you know you don't need to say a lot of things you just need to wear that pin you know uh say Artsakh is our homeland display that flag 
and a lot of things will are already understood that you're in a safe space you are with people that understand um and that you know we need to make sure that this government cannot do any more harm to first the people in artsakh and of course the Armenia. um you know this is our this is our homeland as well for the entire diaspora um so i want to thank you for joining us um this was this was amazing and uh what you're doing is heroic um and in any way that we can help uh directly indirectly you can always contact us you can contact us through uh the the mutual friends that we have we will respond in the various capacities that we can uh you know i i thank you for myself richard david you guys so much. Thank you so very much. Thank yeah. you so very much for having me. Um, and yeah, as you said, it's better late than never. Mm -hmm. um, as I said previously, I do believe in the in the strength of unity of the Armenian people. So, yeah, that's that's the um, hope that I have, yes. and that's precisely why I um, and my friends um, still continue fighting. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. We're grateful for your work. We're grateful um, for your optimism and, and your work. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we'd like to say not goodbye, but you know, see you later. We will uh, next continue time. having a conversation. Till next time. Thank you so very Til much. Till next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh my God. There's so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Greg, thank you for getting uh, for getting in contact with her and and having her join us. Uh, it was very. Uh, what's how do you describe that conversation? I don't know. I think uh, it was um, to hear her say. It actually helped me understand a little bit better now that they did a bait and switch. We are for the Armenian cause. We are for Artsakh, and then they get elected, and then it's the opposite. It's the yeah. opposite. They being my step and Pashinyan's party. Yes. And for the record, I was skeptical of him mm -hmm. during the Velvet Revolution. Yes. But I didn't know or think this, but I also didn't know, and I was going to bring it up, but I wanted to let her speak. Remember, guys, we've talked about this many times. He has writings, published writings that were yeah. anti artsakh yeah. before he was even in politics, right? So... <laughs> The, so, and if I can you know, I address your statement, um, and then we can kind of, you know, thank the viewers for uh, being committed to educating themselves to having this conversation to listening to this conversation, um, because yes. you kind of it, the conversation right now was as direct as it gets, you know, before, you know, yes. David and I and Rich, we, we do these news digests, but what's better than hearing from a person that sits in Parliament and explains to you what she understands is currently going on. Um, and to kind of echo from what you said, look, I don't want to um, say this to the Armenian nation, to those folks that are listening to this outside of this live episode, because, you know, once this goes digitally, this, this, this stays in the, in, the, in, the, in the atmosphere of the wet interwebs forever. Um, we wanted something different in 2018. Like Richard said, uh, Aspram herself alluded to that as well. That is not our crime. It is now on us to understand that what we got was worse than the worst possible thing that you can imagine, okay? And that is where we are being, like if I translate every conversation that I hear in Armenian in parliament from the My Step Alliance and transcribe it in, in, in English, reading their language, reading their body posture, understanding that they do not care about Artsakh, they do not care about diaspora actually, because right, right. their their overlords are in other foreign lands. And by the way, once that pipeline is set up, that money train is going to be so much larger than anything that we in the diaspora can ever raise. So right. that is the threat that I want the diasporans to understand. We are going to become irrelevant to my step, if not already. Right. Okay. And and at that point, I mean. The scenarios are, are are apocalyptic in my head, you know. So yeah, you know, um, Greg and Rich, perhaps I mean, we could talk about this after, obviously, yeah. but perhaps we can have her back to actually talk about what she knows or can share about the normalization with Turkey and about uh, you know the this what's going on with Artsakh and the dangers of these happening at the same time potentially. Well, I think we, uh, uh, I, yeah. think, I think we, I think we know a lot of it without without having to have it explicitly 
um, said to us. And, and just remember, she is a sitting member of, par you know, in parliament. Like, I don't know that, I think that there is a limit to the things that can be disclosed. Mm -hmm. and I think that's reasonable. I, I, would, I would say that um, we get very complacent in this country and we get very cynical about, oh, they're, you know, they're just politicians. They're saying this and they're doing something else. But we somewhere inside believe that our politicians are genuinely trying to dismantle the country until we saw Trump and the people that are really behind him. Now, I'm not going to get into an argument with any Armenian about the, 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 the merits of Trump or not, but I will say this. What it appears and looks like what we've had confirmed is that we had a government in place now that campaigned on saying, yep, we are behind the Armenian cause, and then completely flipped that around, like, like we just heard, um, and are actively dismantling the securities for the nation, which is, yeah. which is unbelievably horrific. The yeah. next, uh, th thank you, Rich, for saying that. The next question, and to me, it's kind of like to the person that wants to see the full picture, right? And we as Armenians, you know, convince me till the, till the end, and then I will become, you know, an al uh, your ally in this cause, right? Um, whereas we kind of, the early adapters saw that, oh my God, this is happening. You know what I mean? Right. When everybody was still like, oh, incompetent, uh, military sucks. We'll do a whole episode on how the military does not suck. Um, I just spoke to, uh, you know, we had a, a, had, a, had, a, had a meeting before this live uh, uh, where uh, a guest speaker was talking about the actual, uh, what do you call it, uh, scenarios of how his friend died in Artsakh, right? Um, and if we go into that, you can immediately smell the, the, the evidence of it's not that the military was bad. Sure, if you had like the, you know, the, the entire uh, of military might of the, uh, uh, of the NATO member Turkey, yeah, you can say Armenia can't match. However, that's not, that's the narrative that's being fed to us. That is not what transpired. So I guess my last statement, and I'll, <laughs> I'll end it, um, is we know that they did a switcheroo, right? Now the other people that ask me, and I no longer care, is why are they doing this? Um, there are, there are, there are, uh, uh, there's evidence as to what, what, what is, what is being pushed on us, whether it's financial, whether it's, uh, uh, um, all sorts of, uh, issues that the My Step Alliance can be in cahoots trying to portray, uh, trying to project onto the Armenian people, right? My answer is I don't care because right now I see the lives of a hundred thousand Armenians are being slowly surrendered and actually not not slowly are it's, it's happening quite fast and that was the result of why we had aspram karpeyan on is because yeah. she yeah. was not allowed to go to our side right. and it was very impactful how she broke down the timing of things so there, it's pretty hard to argue against the fact that it, it was not explicitly because she was opposition and because of what they were trying to do that it was some other reason like obviously that's what would happen that's what it seems like based on her experience right so right uh, and, it and was very purposeful that they were right. denied access yeah. and to drive this home yet again because our audience is diaspora and i go to these you know dinner dates and uh, hangouts and this and that where the diaspora is conversing about what's going on by the way a lot of times that conversation already not even happening and i'm the one pariah that comes into the room and goes right. hey guys let's let's talk oh, about right. our talk right and they're like oh here we go right yeah but then but then people also think about this way they go um it can't be that bad and we here at arash media although we're not you know investigative journalists are here to tell you that 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 thing that you're thinking like oh it can't be that bad it's that bad and it's much worse. more okay worse, so so let's so let's get beyond that that understanding and let's stop being in the shock stage of it i understand right. we'll sit we can sit with our feelings we've had a year plus um and let's get to work guys let's uh, yeah, everyone it's let's get to work cool. because it's not going to end with Artsakh, if I can oversimplify that. It's not going to end with Sunik. It's going to end when there's no more Armenians in Armenia, okay? That's the agenda. That's that train. By that time, my step alliance is already, you know, old and dead. Um, but I don't care. You know what I mean? As, as my relative once explained to me, this, you know, when people go like, well, they voted, blah, blah, blah. First of all, we can go into that conversation. Was she? They all did not vote. 
Right. She answered it. Number one. Absolutely. Number two. So Armenians somehow are these 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 uh, these <laughs> uh, Boy Scout people that constantly ask me. Well, it was already like voted in. First of all, if we want to, you know, wax poetic about the actual situation of what happened in June, we can do that. Second of all, Richard brought up a good point. What if you voted on someone and he turned out to be a murderer? Do you go like, well, we voted, right? right. Evidence right. presents. Right. Evidence, you know, this totalitarian, like, you know, zero well, sum. You mentioned thinking. totalitarian. And Rich, I want to hear your thoughts too. The totalitarian thing you just mentioned, Greg, is, you know, we didn't get that. We didn't get into that because we're so focused on, on Artsakh and this situation. But there's so many other things that we've seen Pashinyan do that are not democratic, no. arresting people, speaking up against him, mm -hmm. firing uh, generals. I and mean, I guess he has that ability to do that. But like, there's just many things that are very confusing. Uh, and are well, not you know, I, the thing is, is that and here's here's the thing that turns a lot of people off the politics is that, you know, inherently in the political game, there's a couple things baked into all the process. One, a representative. Is, he, is often someone who says, I want to represent, I've got a need to be in power. Just like people get wound up about cops because the, 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 the same gene that, that says, I want to have power over somebody with a gun, uh, it, it can turn quickly. Then not all of them are, sa are savior protectors. Not all politicians get into politics with the benevolent reason of helping people. They want the attention, they want the accolades, they want the power that goes along with it. You know what I'm saying? And and that turns a lot of people off to politics, but a lot of politicians will use that to their favor and coerce people and then turn the tables once they're in power. So in other words, Pashinyan is the kind of guy, and I don't, I can't speak for him, but it sure seems this way. Hey, I, we're going to have a velvet revolution. We're going to change this whole thing. And then as soon as he's in power, well, you need to shut up now and you need to shut yeah. up now. And you, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. so the, yeah. the, the, I'm in power and then he right. grasps onto it after losing the worst possible uh, loss of life and war of the, in Armenia's. <laughs> yeah, but I think we both war. know that. Uh, yeah, I think we all know w where and why that happened. I mean, they couldn't, he couldn't. The cynic in me says, and again, I can't, I can't confirm this, but the cynic in me says that he couldn't just hand over the territories without some sort of fight. So it had to legitimize the handing over the territory by allowing thousands of our boys to get murdered. Yeah, more than exactly. four thousand. More than four thousand. Exactly. It's terrible. Yeah. It's awful. There's still POWs, by the way. Everybody needs to know that there's still POWs, hundred, two hundred, whatever it is. There shouldn't be one that's still there, and. There's others that are being tried that are, that are POWs tried on uh, under trial. There's others that have not been found. There are there are remains that have not been found. And I'm sorry, I'm getting really morbid. No, there. It's, no but, it's all right. I, you know, it is. You know, but and I, mean, and I I wanted to push her a little bit by saying, you know, I don't know if we have to be subjected to this man for six years, but if there's anything you can do, yo, you better start doing it. Well, they are <laughs> right. They're boycotting. They're protesting. You know, I, I'm curious. I know. We, maybe again, let's have her back, Greg. Let's definitely have her back because maybe we could talk to her more about. I don't know why she wouldn't be able to talk about this. Like, what does the Armenian Constitution say about removing? Uh, we, uh, leader, for, for that, about I mean, I mean, yes, David, I would like to have someone, and now we're like uh, on air planning another episode. We should, I know, do sorry, that. but what I think we should do, <laughs> there's right. a lot of there's hey. a lot of actually experts on the Armenian Constitution that we could also invite and we can talk about it people in the field of law. Uh, she is currently on the front line of trying to like end this monstrous uh, capitulation. I think we can, uh, we can, you know, we can call her up on, you know, when there's more, more of an agenda of what to do from the diaspora. I really, really kind of wanted to, yeah, uh, make sure that the diaspora is not sleeping on this, that there's an April 24th coming up and that we yeah, all need right. to continue marching to the uh, remembrance of our ancestors. Uh, these are people from Artsakh, these are people from Armenia, and these are people why most of the diaspora has been formed. What happened uh, 100 years ago is continuing to happen today, okay? Right. And Greg, I yeah. have a point to make. Please. Um, it's, uh, there's no way to spin it positive, but it's directly related to you mentioning how the diaspora needs to be informed. Mm -hmm. We put a post up on Arach Media mm -hmm. denouncing Pashinyan. Yeah. Uh, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. I'll express that I was concerned at first that we did that, but then I looked into it, Greg. Yeah. And I was like, 
right on that needed to be said because of what he said April 13, saying that essentially Artsakh is part of Azerbaijan and that we need to make concessions in a nutshell, right? We just talked about that for an hour with Aspro. But we received messages from people mm-hmm. actually directly to me, not to the page, yeah. asking about why. Why to talk about Pashinyan, negative talk about Pashinyan. So, Greg, just to your point about the need to educate the diaspora, sadly, I hate to say this, and Greg, you've been harping on this for a long time, way before the war, that sadly the diaspora is not informed. Absolutely. Or Absolutely. if they are somehow, maybe some people are somehow still back I mean, that- on to the Belba Revolution. I don't know. Guys, isn't, like, isn't, it, do isn't that why you guys started this in the first place? Yes, yes, we, we, right. we, 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 yes, uh, this, that's why we're here. Yeah. Yes, right. So, David, to address your statement, and I think we should wrap at this point. Yes, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, April 24th, Sunday, everybody check with your local uh, yeah. organizations, go be there, be with your people, sit with one another, remember our ancestors. We all have been affected by the genocide of 1915 in, 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 in Turkey, okay, in the Ottoman Empire. So that's, num- that's number one. Number two, yes, part of the genocide is, I don't like to constantly walk around and correct people, but there is a lot of lack of information. There's a lot of misinformation. Um, there, was a, there was a seminar that, was, that I was on, on a, a while back saying what kind of a, 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 a major, major uh, campaigns of misinformation are being levied against uh, towards the diaspora so that people sometimes don't know what's going on. And ultimately, quite frankly, sometimes the diasporans, right? Out of, you know, let's be a little self-critical, do act a little bit like, like, you know, in the United States, we call them, you know, one issue voter, right? Yeah. And they go like, well, you know, uh, what is Yerevan currently doing towards that particular uh, issue? When in reality, what Osprom just said, what I say, what David, all of us say, it really doesn't matter about that one particular issue that really matters to you, sir or madam, right? What matters is that we're losing the whole thing, okay? And we need to hold down to it. So educate yourself. Understand that, you know, you can reform a country. You cannot reform a no country, okay? That's right. it. Right. So if I can piggyback on your statement, Craig, um, April 24th is not just an event that begin, that a date 107 years ago. April 24th is the beginning of what is still happening. And the way that we're going to survive this is to show that we're still here, to show that we're still vibrant, to show that we're still uh, building, and to really enact that, to really bring that to other people, bring that to non-Armenians who don't know the story, you know, explain to them what this means and why we're here, and find a way to contribute back to the community that you're in, Um, not just the Armenian community, but the American community as well, because and I've said it before, um, you know, if, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you if you want to go far, you go together. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and and this is this is the t- you know, this is not like uh, I know that's a that's a common saying. But, you know, what I've said is is we're going to need allies. And we need to have as many allies as, as, as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, so Oscar was mentioning that too. Yeah. I agree. And yeah, well, well said, Rich. Well said. I'll end. I'll end on this note. And for myself, uh, uh, we and our media are are kind of a, an entity that's trying to spread or amplify information, right? And I'll kind of give this suggestion to myself first and foremost. Um, oftentimes, like you know, I could be a little dismissive, understanding when I'm talking to someone that really, really doesn't get it. Uh, but take the time to explain. Let's pull people in rather than just push them out. I have started to ally myself, ally myself, or align myself with folks from walks of life that I probably would not have two years ago, simply because the world has changed completely. And I understood it and I kind of grew up with it. Um, So let's take the time to sit with one another, understand each other's concern, um, educate each other, and understand that you know what's happening in the Yerevan, it can't continue because we're literally watching the letting go of a hundred thousand Armenians, um, and that will be the beginning, not the end. That and will, that will be the right. beginning. That will be the beginning of the end of 
a lot a lot of, a lot of horrors are going to commence from there on um for example yeah anyways there's so much to say but uh i think yeah, i mean i mean i'll, I'll I just I, uh, <laughs> I know. just that we're even having to have this discussion so close to april 24th when the whole purpose of most people celebrating April 24th is in some sort of form of defiance. The idea that we are even talking about the concession of one yard of land is unimaginable, is unimaginable to me. I, 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 it, I feel like I'm living in an alternate universe. And to all those kids that David, you kind of wanted to mention this the, to to Osram, but I, you know, I'm glad we did not because it's something that she deals with every day. She's in Yerevan. To all those kids that are kind of like in a little zombified mode right now, uh, going to the cafes, you know, there's life. Life has to happen. There are things going on in Yerevan. Um, but if you can start kind of awakening yourself, right? Because there are those that are just kind of like. Everybody that's coming from Armenia says that the mood has dropped, okay? And maybe going to a cafe or a restaurant, if you can afford it, is a way for you to just see a little bit of the situation of normalcy, your life. But to all those that really actually, you know, uh, don't care, um, it's, it's, it's time to wake up. It's been past time, but now is literally the time to wake up. And that's the end on my part. Right. On that note, um, we are going to be promoting uh, upcoming shows um, in our Facebook feed and on YouTube and uh, through our email. David has been fantastic about putting together content. So uh, we're, we're continually trying to reform, formulate a regular sk schedule. Um, but please stay tuned. Uh, thank you to everybody who has been uh, supportive and who've been watching thus far. Thank you to everybody who uh, are watching on YouTube right, right now. We really pre appreciate it. Obviously, there are uh, three guys who are doing the best that we can. We are not funded. Um, you know, we, we're doing this bootstrap and we, um, we're yeah. doing everything that we can for the nation. So um, keep, yeah, we'll keep paying it. attention to all of our so social media. And if you go to our link tree, which you should have a link for, and I'll put in the comment section. Uh, of this Facebook thread, you'll have links to everything that we're putting out. So uh, that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, well said, guys. April 24, 2 p.m., Mount Davidson Cross in San Francisco uh, is the event here in the Bay Area. Uh, Rich, do, do we have information on the Sacramento event? Do, do, no, we don't. We do no, not. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's okay. Has anything been announced? I don't know if anything's been announced up there or not. That's all. Uh, there is, there is a lot of things that are being an, uh, announced up and down uh, West Coast and East Coast. Uh, yeah. Check with uh, uh, your local AYF and ARF chapters. I'm gonna say that coming from yeah, me. yeah, no, absolutely. Um, because uh, those kids are seemingly the ones that are kind of trying to, you know, uh, organize yeah. on the, uh, you know, a lot of things on the East Coast. I do know the Knights and Daughters of Varton. Uh, in Times Square are doing yeah. something and it's mm -hmm. been on the schedule. So if you're in a metro area, you can you can definitely do something. By the way, if you're in an area that does not have an event, you can host one, you know? It doesn't have to be big. It could be something small, a little candlelit vigil, uh, poetry reading, maybe go come together and talk about the stories of your ancestors. Bring, bring a friend. Um, if you're in Idaho, let's say, and there's no not a vibrant Armenian community there, you know? You can, you can do it. Make one. That's what we do. Love you guys. Yeah. Till next time. Um, you know, let's let's keep it going. All right. Yeah. All right. Till next time, everyone. Take care. Good night, everyone.